move to A.K. Thakur Memorial Oration to chair the session with Dr. Rishim Chatterjee, Dr. B.P. Sinha, Dr. K.K. Barun, and Dr. D. Nath. Over to Dr. Rishim Chatterjee for the oration. Dr. Chatterjee, sir, are you, are you hearing us? Yes, yeah, yes. Please, please muted, muted. Unmute yourself. Unmute your, yourself, sir. Dr. Chatterjee, unmute yourself. Yeah, I am there. Yes, yeah. we can hear you now. I think I think the office staff should do it because I am present. I Can I start? Yeah, yeah. You can start. Yes. Good evening, everybody. Uh, uh, and this scientific program, we uh, every year we have a uh, uh, memorial oration in the name of uh, late Dr. A.K. Thakur. And we all know that Dr. A.K. Thakur was the man behind the creation of CSI Bihar chapter. And he had many, uh, many things to his credit. And to give this oration, we have none other than Dr. Asok Sage. He is the chairman of Fortis Scott Heart Institute. He is the president of Asian Pacific Society of Interventional Cardiology. He is the founder director of ICFI, HYFI, and IFACI. He has been uh, awarded Padma Sri, Padma Bhushan, and BCRI award. And the list is long. Everybody, every one of us knows Dr. Asok Seth in a very close way. In fact, uh, I still vividly remember 25 years back or 27 years back when he had come from USA and joined the. Uh, Institute of uh, Cardiology over there. I have seen him working as a cardiologist since then and seen his phenomenal growth. I invite Dr. Asok Seth to come over the desk and speak and give his oration for, in the name of Dr. A.K. Chatterjee. Thank you very much, Dr. Chatterjee. I hope you can all hear me. Yes. I will soon share my screen, but let me say a few words before I share my, share my screen. Uh, you forgot to mention the most important aspect, and that is that I am a son of the soil. I'm yeah. priv proud and privileged to have been born in Sabor, very near Bhagalpur, to have studied in Patna and Muzaffarpur, for my father to have uh, privileged for my father to be a Prince of Wales Medical College graduate uh, of 1949, and thankfully, God willing, he's still alive and still practices medicine, and he did MD from Darbhanga and was a part of the Bihar Government State Service. Uh, so I'm truly always honored that I was born in Bihar because Bihar has produced the most intellectual people who are genuine from the heart. And uh, so I can tell you around the world, just meet a Bihari, simple and always from the heart. You'll always find that. That's a nonstop for any Bihari. So I'd rather be a Bihari than anybody else from any state in, the, in, in, in India. Uh, now with these words, uh, I'm also privileged and honored by all of you. Uh, Dr. Thakur is a legend and it's indeed a privilege of mine, an honor of mine to give this oration on his name. And finally, Dr. Chatterjee, don't forget the fact I'm so bonded with Patna uh, because the first angiogram and the first angioplasties of uh, Indira Gandhi Institute of uh, uh, the, uh, the, the Medical Sciences, the one which Dr. Thakur led, and the, was, the, it, it's all, and the one which Dr. Mishra led and yourself, uh, we were together in creating that uh, cath lab. We were together in starting angiographies in the state of, uh, uh, in Patna and in the state of Bihar. And of course, those are fond memories of every aspect of uh, proceeding forwards. Uh, with these words, I think, uh, let me start the share screen and uh, go on to this oration. So this, this talks about, let me just go to the, I hope you can see my slides. Can you see my slides? Yes, we can. Good. So we're going to talk about this 30 year or more, more than 30 years of journey in interventional cardiology in the country. You're practically right, Dr. Chatterjee, that uh, I uh, returned from abroad in 1988, which is now 33 years ago. And let me just tell you that the field of interventional cardiology 
started with Andres Brunzik in 1977, a radiologist in Zurich, who did a balloon angioplasty in the coronary arteries for the first time. And when that patient survived and lived, it actually created a new speciality altogether, that of opening up blockages within coronary arteries and treating coronary artery disease with not medical therapy, with not bypass surgery, but with interventional cardiology. So it was 1918, 79 that I went abroad. By 1980, I was actually working in England. Uh, and, uh, uh, and this was soon after my, my MBBS. I practically didn't even do my internship here. I did it abroad. And uh, so therefore it was England all the time. And I therefore got uh, exemption from that from the medical council at that stage. I started doing, because after internal medicine, I did cardiology and it was in Birmingham that we started, we became the second center in the UK to start balloon angioplasties in those days. So it was nascent days of angioplasty. Uh, the Birmingham University Teaching Hospital seemed to be one of the pioneers in it. We had very crude guides. We had only heparin and aspirin, no dual antiplatelets. There was no clopidogrel. We had crude balloons. We had no, we, the images and the cath labs were very crude. Uh, we had to record it on a video to replay any frames. And there was no, no re reruns and cines, and there was not digital. It was very, very much uh, 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 non-digital cines. But we also had a 10% acute vessel closure, 5% of acute MIs, 3% of deaths, and always an OT standby for emergency bypass surgery. It was really, you know, you can go back to that and say, it must require conviction, belief, courage, to take on a fear of interventional cardiology as a new field, which actually had a 3% death rate at that time and patients crashing with 5% rates of MR. Return back for the sake story of my family, my, my, uh, my parents, my only son of my mother and father, they always wished to have me to come back. My mother wasn't keeping good health. So after 10 years abroad, returned back to the country uh, at their insistence and started off the first angiogram and angioplasty of the Escott's Heart Institute, which we created. That was 1988, October. You will see me here uh, dashingly. I think I should be say, I should not say myself, but you'd consider me smart enough uh, uh, and, and not, uh, not bad looking in those days as we returned. And I did the first angiogram and the first angioplasty of the, Fortis, of the Escott's Heart Institute, one of the first in the countries, and then set standards for the country, which was superlative. So in 1988 to 95, practically pushed intervention cardiology to the limits. I clearly uh, felt that this, need, this was a technique which needed to be taken much further ahead as had been seen in the country. There were a few of us, there were a handful of us. There were seven of us who were actually eight, no, I'd say first 10. There were 10 of us who were doing uh, angioplasties at that time in the whole country. We created what we called an angioplasty club of India. We first met for the first time in 1989 in February, and that is the club which gradually grew, and we started training other, in, you know, other doctors to do interventional cardiology through a formal angioplasty training program in uh, uh, in 1992, and that PTCA club of India, which actually included, apart from myself, was Upendra Kaul, Gambhir, Somaraju, De Palajani, Matthew, Ashwin Mehta, and KK Sethi actually then became what we call the National Interventional Council of India, as you see it today. Now, those were the days where I thought that I could actually achieve anything with balloon angioplasty. My hero was Jeffrey Hartzler in Kansas City, who I spent time with, and he was phenomenal. He could do anything with balloon angioplasty, including acute MI angioplasty, multi-vessel angioplasty. And remember, those were the days of there were no stents, poor antiplatelet therapy, and all you had was your own skills and belief and conviction. Now, this is a case which is 1992, which even I, at this time, I would dread to do with stents and best of antiplatelet regimens. You can see the right coronary artery, multiple lesions, long lesions. You have an osteal circumflex. You have an anomalous left main arising from the right coronary sinus. You then have multiple circumflex lesions. I would still be in the present era would be considered mad. I could do believe that I could do this with balloon angioplasties in those days. I actually did this case, sent it for publication, refused by five journals saying, this is unethical to practice this, this type of interventional cardiology. And I had achieved success in all these lesions. 
but it only got published when two years later, the patient turned up with some symptoms and I was able to re-angiogram him. He had a new lesion, but all the previous lesions with balloon angioplasty stayed fine. And then the International Journal of Cardiology accepted this for publication. We weren't very happy with balloon angioplasties. Remember, I said there was a number of complications happening. The artery would collapse back. So we, were, we moved ahead to cutters, drillers, scrapers, burners, burners. You know, this was directional atherectomy, a device I introduced into the country and propagated usually from 92 to 96 to 97. And this was one of the new methods of cleating cutter. It was absolutely a cutter, cutting artery uh, plaques out from within the coronary arteries. And this is one example of it. Here's an osteal LADs disease. You can see high grade stenosis. Even at the present times, you have a difficulty in opening these lesions up with stents. Here's the cutter rotating at 2000 revolutions, actually with window plaque prolapsing into the cutter, actually cutting out plaques from within the coronary arteries. That's the final result, absolutely pristine looking. You can actually see I've cut everything out. And these are the strips of plaque that one got from within the coronary arteries. We started moving towards drillers. This is rotational atherectomy, which we introduced in, again in 92 into the country created the first rotoblator certification force to train other physicians in this country in 95, because you could only do rotational atherectomy if you, if you got trained. I was trained in the courses in the United States, so I actually created courses in India to train other interventional cardiologists. And that's, of course, you see us going back into 95, where I created this rotoblator system training program. Bare metal stents we introduced in 1995 into our country, that is the second revolution of percutaneous coronary intervention we say after balloon angioplasty. You all understand and know what stents do. And I was again the first one to introduce this to the country. Uh, and we created, of course, we moved on. And by the way, from 1995 to 2002, these were the first in the country and some of the first in the Asia Pacific region, which I was responsible for introducing. Uh, Bare metal stents, angioscopies, never no anybody had done angioscopies in the whole country, including Asia. Thrombectomy devices, I had to introduce angiogenic thrombectomy. Again, even before it actually got approved into the United States, I started doing laser per per percutaneous laser revascularization of cardiac muscle in diffusely diseased coronary arteries, uh, which could not be revascularized, therefore drilling holes into the myocardium. And we'll just address that in a moment. And of course, distal protection devices and intravascular ultrasound was also introduced by me. So PMR, the percutaneous laser revascularization, drilling holes into the myocardium was again introduced by me. And we did around, you know, around uh, 40, 50 cases at that time, soon realized that it wasn't. We were the fourth center outside and third, fourth center in the world and third center outside United States to start third center, fourth center, and the first center outside the United States to start doing this. Uh, of course, drug eluding stents became the revolution of interventional cardiology, so we moved ahead. Always on the cutting edge is what I believe that we had to be as India. And it was a privilege of mine to not just see the advancements of science in interventional cardiology, but to be a part of actually uh, progress of science, especially for India and Asia Pacific region. So 2002 onwards, for the first time in A India and many times for the Asia Pacific, I introduced drug eluding stents, transcatheotic valve implantation, impeller heart support pump, and the bioresorbable vascular scaffolds. Let, you take, let me take you through the journey, which was so fascinating subsequently. And if I take you through this uh, journey, let's come to the first, the bioresorbable vascular scaffold. Once we had the drug eluding stents in the first few years, while we had the hype, that it had actually conquered the restenosis possibility. Remember the bare metal stents had this 30%, 40% possibility of restenosis within the first six months. Uh, this, the, the obvious issue was the drug eluding stents could stop restenosis and give us a better outcomes. But again, these were metallic devices and we still started realizing that even drug eluding stents had their own deficiencies being metal metallic devices and needed dual antiplatelet therapy for a prolonged duration of time. Obviously, the thoughts started going towards bioresorbable scaffolds, stents made of polymer, uh, which would actually uh, deliver the drug over the period of six weeks, six, uh, six weeks to six months, and then gradually disappear over the next two to three years, leaving the artery absolutely as, as if it had never been touched by any artificial devices. 
Uh, with that, of course, here is, of course, the, the fascinating images of the absorb bioresorbable vascular scaffold that he is its implantation. It's no more metal. It's absolutely plastic polymer. And over a period of two years, it's gone completely. The artery is healed up. There is no foreign body. There's no foreign metal. It just leaves the artery as if it's natural. So this, of course, was thought to be the fourth revolution of interventional cardiology. And I must say, I contributed tremendously to it. For example, was it really worth it? And absolutely, it, was, it is worth it. And we perhaps will get back to it uh, over the next few years. For example, here's a 38-year-old diabetic male smoker with a family history. He's got his LED totally occluded. He's got his diagonal stenosis. He's got circumflex occluded. He's got a proximal circumflex lesion. This is bad disease in a 38-year-old. Imagine if this patient had been given metal all around. He would have had long tubes of metal at the age of 38, which would have absolutely been every year after year, he would have been close to a 2 to 3% cardiac event rate for whole of his life and would not have survived for more than a few years uh, before he actually succumbed to his coronary artery disease. This was treated by five bioresorbable vascular scaffolds. His whole LED has been treated. His LED diagonal bifurcation has been treated by a technique which I had devised. His circumflex has been treated, and this looks perfect. Well, this is what it looks like at the time. This is what it looks like at five years follow-up. Absolutely clean arteries, all the lesions looking great. There is no restenosis at any point. In nearly 15 to, 15 to 17 centimeters of, uh, of uh, stents there, except that these are absorbable stents. And when you look at this, five years later, this is absolutely what we call a miracle. That's why I believe that bioresorbable scaffolds are worth it. At the time of implantation, at the index procedure, you see the stent, the bioresorbable scaffolds, these footprints, these squares all across, including at the bifurcation, a carina, which is made of plastic. Look at it five years later. The artery, there is nothing there. Absolutely clean arteries. The bifurcation has been restored to its natural form and shape as if nothing ever existed there. Actually, his arteries have moved back in time to 10 years before. I think that is the promise of bioresorbable scaffolds, which very few people saw. Well, I, I, did a, I had described for the first time in the world, as you can see, first ever case reports and te technical considerations published in catheterization cardiovascular interventions of how to do bifurcation with bioresorbable vascular scaffolds. And I described the technique the term which I coined at that time became the standard terminology for doing bifurcations in biovascular, bioresorbable vascular scaffold. I was invited in 2014 to the prestigious TCT, the world's biggest and the largest meeting of interventional cardiologists, to demonstrate my bifurcation techniques in the main arena, as you can actually see here, which was a privilege and a prestige for India and Asia Pacific region when it actually flashed to a 5,000 audience sitting in the main arena in the United States. And as I demonstrated that technique, it was truly a revolution. We did combine studies with uh, uh, Antonio Colombo from Milan, who again is a leader, a profound leader in interventional cardiology in the world. And some of our data was representative of the results which could be achieved by bioresorbable vascular scaffold. So I published a lot. I actually commented a lot on this. Some of my stuff became a standard of treatment, how to do bioresorbable vascular scaffolds around the world. We, I was quoted in numerous publications, as you can see here, even in the West, even in presentations. And some of those, those absorbed trials were also a part of some of my, our, our, our contributions. So the absorbed journey, my, my research, my publications into absorb went into huge aspects, uh, mantras on how to do it, editorial comments on bifurcation lesions, and it continued on and on to multiple publications, which I contributed to an understanding of bioresorbable scaffolds across the world. But what was more important, and I was the first Indian doctor ever invited to the US FDA panel to present my experience of the bioresorbable vascular scaffold and my perspective to the FDA panel. And that led to its approval in the United States of Absorb. It was one of the, so the presentations. Uh, which therefore led to its approval. And I think that is truly prestigious to present to the FDA panel for a doctor who's not from United States, from, but outside country, and that also India. 
Well, we wrote up the textbook of Byers Obel Vascular Scaffold. I was one of the section editors. Of course, the editor in chief was Patrick Sorois. And we therefore had the launch of this book at the TCT. And that was again, another prestigious aspect of, uh, of my contribution to the Byers Obel Scaffold. But we went a step went ahead. We went a step further. You remember Byers Obel Vascular Scaffolds were voluntarily stopped because they were thick strut devices. They seem to have higher chances of thrombosis in most operators' hand, but in, not in our hands. Our data was very profound along with Antonio Colombo, and that's what we demonstrated. But India was the first one to therefore move to the thin strut pyrosorbyl vascular scaffold as we have them today, the Miras 100. Uh, and I must compliment Indian engineers and research scientists who actually contributed to creating such a fascinating pyrosorbyl vascular scaffold from India for the first time for the world, the thin strut device. And I was the principal investigator of this device, the Miras 1 study was presented at the TCT Washington and the Euro PCR uh, in, in uh, Paris, the two of the largest meetings and the most prestigious meetings of the world. It was published at the same time, the one-year data and the three-year data was published simultaneously with me as the first author in Euro Intervention, one of the prestigious journals of interventional cardiology. And that set the stage for approval of Miras 100 in the country. And we're now moving on to a big randomized study for Miras 100. Of course, aortic stenosis is another area which I contributed to, and I just left it for subsequent. The first transcat aortic valve replacement was done by the great Aaron Cribier on 16th April 2002 with a balloon expandable device in a patient with cardiogenic shock denied surgery. Of the self expandable valve, the core valve, as we called it at that time, the story started from here. It started from here. And this was 2004, second of uh, August at the Escorts Institute, the first ever implant of a self-expandable stent in the world in a patient with a aortic regurgitation as a proof of concept happened with me. And this was a, a historic moment. It's a spine chilling moment. I still remember that day. It was unbelievable to see a patient with severe aortic regurgitation, absolutely the, the regurgitation to disappear on table. And that started, that was a part of the first in-man study first in human study, and it started the new era of, of transcat theory valve replacement, especially with the self-expandable valves as we see it today as Medtronic Evolute R program. This was acknowledged by, of course, on the, on the wall of fame at the London's valve in 2017, the first successful core valve implant in the world. And of course, we did not, after the first in human study, it was not available in India, Till again, I introduced it in 2012 as the valve developed and Medtronic brought it over. In 2012, we introduced it for first compassionate use of the device in India. And of course, we progressed tremendously with the device in not just high surgical risk patients, but also now in moderate, intermediate, and low surgical risk patients in conscious sedation. Uh, and we published extensively of our Indian experiences across the world. And we now done, you know, published a lot around this. As you can see, these are all our papers. And clearly, I won't take you through this, you all know this, but really it's now minimally invasive technique. Uh, if you are minimalist, our patients get to the ward the next day and start walking around, and most patients go home on the second day. It is in some ways to us easier than doing a balloon and to doing a complex angioplasty, because for us, Tava takes half an hour to 40 minutes to complete a procedure and for the patients to go home. If they go home so easily that this is the sort of groin that we, when we finish the procedure, this is the sort of groin that we see. And actually they just go home and here's the patient. This is two days. This is the lady who had it in 2012 as our first patient. This is the lady who's two days post. She had stayed six days in hospital. She's going home on the second day. They're talking to each other because she'd come for a chest infection. They were able to talk to each other, compare their, compare their data and talk about how the minimalist approach has actually changed everything. But if the cost became an important issue for us, I mean, this month, this month uh, we've done 10 towers uh, and practically everybody's just gone home in uh, 48 to 72 hours time, but the cost is an important issue. And therefore, again, uh, our kudos to the engineers of India, balloon expandable uh, 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 techniques and uh, balloon expandable valve got developed from India by, by Merrill Life Sciences, truly indigenous, truly uh, extremely good uh, valve 
at uh, nearly 60% of the price as the Western valves. And of course, intuitively easy to implant. And therefore I therefore proceeded and therefore I was the principal investigator of the MyVal1 study, the study meant for its approval in India and which has led to its also its approval in Europe. And then therefore presented this study again at the Euro PCR and it was published simultaneously in the, in, in the Euro intervention. We proceeded to do in there the first percutaneous transaxillary valve, which means putting the valve through the through the access in the and this is percutaneous, not a cut down, using the sutures to actually just do it percutaneously from the axillary artery in a patient whose femorals were absolutely small, and that is the gradient as you can see of the severe aortic stenosis prior. You can see the valve coming from the axillary and the subclavian down across the the into the into the aorta and being implanted as you can see on the left side and on the right side, you see an implanted valve and you can actually see in the next that the gradient's gone down to zero and the patient actually just does extremely well. And you just close it with percutaneous sutures, which are again, the device and the, 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 the entry point, which is by the way, which is an 18 French entry point is actually closed. Just a word about the introduction of the, the, the smallest heart pumps into the country. In 2017, I introduced this device for the first time in Asia Pacific region. These are percutaneous heart pumps, which can be introduced into the left ventricular cavity and support the patient. And these have been developed subsequently much more since 2017, when, no, for since 2007, when I first introduced it. And it can give up to 3.5 liters per minute when introduced percutaneously. Of course, I won't take you through this 2007 patient, which was the first one in Asia Pacific region, but this was a patient in cardiogenic shock and MI. We airlifted from Jaipur on a ventilator. His, hemo his global, global ischemia, his hemodynamics were extremely poor with a systolic pressure of 77 with the PA pressures of 44. We introduced this heart pump, as you can see here, from the left, uh, left femoral, and then from the right femoral, we did his left main and right coronary artery angioplasty. And of course he walked home five days later, all fine. And he's continued to live literally 10 years from there on. And so that was introduced at that time. We had this for two years after that. Again, FDA got, it got, FDA got approved by the FDA. We actually were the first ones also invited to demonstrate again to the TCT in Washington in 2007, complex high-risk PCIs on impeller support. Astounding into the main arena. Can you believe that the Americans who use the impeller in the biggest, uh, biggest uh, methods now uh, and, and uh, use it the most, actually saw how to use Impella and learn it from India. I think that was a prestige and a privilege of ours to demonstrate it at that time when only, when, when a, the first trial was ongoing in the United States. Of course, the United States has led, led this field from there on, but we are honored by the fact that this was acclaimed as a beautiful demonstration of treacherous cases because I was demonstrating 20% ejection fraction, previous bypass surgery, last remaining grafts. We were transmitting from India at 12 o'clock at night to the main arena, which was at 10 o'clock that time in Washington. These very complex high-risk cases. One of them had arrested even half an hour before our transmission. And this device was actually done to save him and to open up his remaining arteries. So I won't take you through this because these are some of the most fascinating and disastrous cases of, of people who would have died if they had not been put on impella and actually had complex high-risk PCIs done to save their lives and then walk out of the hospital. But it's become a norm for us now, as, a, as this reintroduction happened uh, again by me, uh, uh, practically just uh, uh, three years ago. Again, we introduced it because again, it had moved out of our country. We reintroduced it back into the country. Another device I'd actually introduced for the first time in the uh, country is the treatment of mitral regurgitation using the MitraClip device which was again around three years ago. It won't take you through the patient, but we, this was a guy who could not even walk for, five, for, for uh, 50 yards. He had a failing heart, severe mitral regurgitation, which was functional, and we clipped it, and he now walks six kilometers a day. Uh, finally, the other thing which I introduced very recently was the shockwave little tripsy for heavily calcified lesions. Um, this is a special type of a balloon which cracks calcium within the coronary arteries, makes it more easy to implant, uses shockwave, almost like what you use to crack renal stones. 
uh, by lithotripsy. Now it comes as a balloon form. You can insert it into coronary arteries and treat heavily calcified lesions by cracking them and giving a uniform stent expansion. This was introduced by me again to the country in a year and a half ago at the CHIP CTO meeting, which I do. So I won't take you through anything more. I mean, this has been a great journey in the interest of time. I would say that was 1988. 33 years have gone by. 1988 is when I returned back to this country uh, for the sake of my parents. It's been a rewarding uh, 33 years, 2021, leading from the top, uh, giving India a place on the world interventional cardiology map, elevating its standards and making everyone believe across the world that India achieves something and India's expertise is one of the best in the world. Uh, and in that, I'm actually with all humility and with all humbleness, uh, with actually fear, fearful of God, I actually have to tell you that more than 65,000 angiograms, I would say more than 27,000 angioplasties have been performed by me. More than 100 national and international awards, I've been thankful for that. Six doctorates of the, some of the most prestigious national universities like Banaras Hindu University, Aligarh Muslim University, Jamia Millia Islamia. Uh, more than 550 invited speaker at national and international meetings. More than 150 live transmissions of complex angioplasty techniques at more than uh, at national and international meetings. More than 400 publications more than 30 editorials in peer, more than 50 editorials in peer reviewed journals, trained innumerable interventional cardiologists across the world. And then only interventional cardiologists from India to have been given the prestigious designation of MSCI, the master interventionalist as they call it, by the American Society of Cardiovascular Angiography and Interventions. I think this has been a humble journey. Compassion, care, communication, and confidence. That's what we owe to our patients. Ethical practices. You have to believe that the patient across you is your own relative or friend. It has to come through, through humility, through ethics. Uh, quality outcomes have to be important and we need to continue to be leading, learning, researching. We have to be inspirational and aspirational for our juniors. And we have to set standards of education and teaching. These are the, the requirements of success, but I would just say, while you have, can have passion, sincerity, hard work ethics, and you need respect and affection of the patients and your peers, you need sacrifices of your families and you need to thank them regularly for it. You need blessings of your parents, but you certainly need the will of God. And finally, I would say this has been a great journey. I've been blessed. I've just been not, I've just been doing what I was meant to do. I actually believe that uh, God wanted me to do this. It was not me. I was just at the right place at the right times and I continued to work and I continued to count my blessings for it is a rare minority whose lives are enriched in a daily occupation from which we derive deep and lasting satisfaction as well as blessings. So I can only say at the end, Dr. Ashok said, count your blessings, count your blessings because you, God willed it for you. You didn't do it yourself. This is not your journey. This is his journey. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for your nice history of a journey of interventional cardiology from horse's mouth. Very nice and lucid description. We have inspired a lot. Thank you, sir, again. I, I mm -hmm. Sir, we already will get a story from here. Give me a moment, though, and Saul, so we will send it to you, sir, as usual. And your side of the file, Dr. Chagarji, or what to speak, we always remember you. We will start at our interventional journey. Thank you. Thank you, I, I wish I could be with you all, truly, yes. truly, from my heart. I wish I was there. I wish I could receive in person. Yes. I wish I could give you all a big hug. Thank you. Dr. Tiyam is here. Dr. Tiyam is here. He worked with you. You are not only a great interventionist, sir, you are a good teacher, excellent teacher. Thank you. Whatever I am doing is because of you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Neera. We are proud of you. Very proud of you. Thank you. We will be sending you. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Nishan, organizing secretary of the government. Organizing chairman, Dr. 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 Dr.
हाँ जी डॉक्टर चैटर्जी आप सबको बहुत बहुत प्रणाम और हमें आपकी सबकी बहुत याद आती है तो पटना से इतनी दूर हो गए बिहार से इतनी दूर हो गए हमें तो अगले साल तक जरूर वहां के पास है Ladies and gentlemen, now we move to the next session. Much awaited presidential oration by Dr. D. P. Singh. He thanked and says, "I am seeing him for his presidential oration." And to chair this session, as Dr. D. and Dr. D. P. Thakur had not joined for some personal reasons, I will request Dr. Kamlesh Tiwari, President API, to introduce Dr. D. P. Singh. for this presidential oration dr kamlesh tiwari ji dr kamlesh tiwari ji sir thank you dr bp singh thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to introduce a big person of bihar dr dp singh has covered all the aspects all the society of bihar he has headed cardiology he has headed api He has headed, headed IMA of Bihar, so all three faculty, big faculty of Bihar is headed by Dr. D. P. Singh. Now he is going to present his presidential oration in cardiology. Dr. D. P. Singh is Indian. Dr. Ramendra sir, Dr. Ramendra sir, we can also say a few other things for us, sir. Dr. Uh, thank you, thank you, Dr. Ramendra sir. Uh, Dr. Ramendra sir, D. P. Singh does not need any introduction. as dr kamlesh tiwari said he is he has been president of the ima api csi so he is a versatile clinician and we are going to hear from him indian type of dyslipidemia as you are aware dyslipidemia of indian type differs from western type because we do not have so much raised ldl but it is a small dense ldl which is important and that is atherogenic so without uh, uh, wasting one much time i request dr dp singh kindly go ahead with the talk present celebration honorable chairpersons our respected national president api dr professor kamlesh tiwari sir our learned and erudite cardiologist and teacher and founder president of ccdsi and stalwart of api dr an rai sir and all friends of csi and api present and just we have listened to from the legend of cardiology top class cardiologist of india and reigning supreme even in the world as he has mentioned about the world fda and others where he has presented the papers and shown that how truly indians can have this signing life and starting the journey from bihar and from bhagalpur uh, to which i belong and with these words i start what i am going to say just like a truly indian about the indian dyslipidemia friends india is in the middle of an epidemic of escvd which is showing no sign of abating cad manifest almost a decade earlier in india than in western countries incidence of cad is increasing most rapidly among patients younger than 40 years of age and to feed 25% of mi in india occur before the age of 40 years and more than 50 years of cad associated deaths in india occur before the age of 50 years and so the productive years of life of indians we indians are lost because of this great epidemic of that is cad and of which the dyslipidemia is the major contributor 
major risk factor causing this atherosclerosis. Alarmingly, the prevalence of dyslipidemia as defined by NCEP guideline in India is very high. 80% of Indians have got one and other form of dyslipidemia. And the most importantly, we don't have the elevated LDLC level, just 12%. We have got the low HDLC level, 72%. Triglyceride level is also in the tune of 30%. Hence, optimal management of dyslipidemia is key to stem this epidemic of this coronary artery disease. What is the Indian story? Say this IIT professional, 32 year. He was occasional drinker and smoker. He was not a diabetic and hypertensive. He was obese. Father died of heart attack at 50 years of age, recently married. He was anxious of the heart attack, but his coronary was normal. LD was not very high. Triglyceride was high. HDL was low. ACC scoring was just 2%, not 10% or more. So do you give the statin? Do you, how long? And what are the side effects in next 25? And so I will try to answer how it differs from other counterparts. We, we have got the Lipid Association of India expert consensus. In 2016, we have got the statement. In 20 also, we have got the third part of it. And what the chairman of this uh, LAIP, LAI says, Raman Puri, Indians are unique. Unfortunately, are afflicted by ASCVD that is premature, severe, and carries high mortality. Seized of this serious situation, LAI launched its missions to in improving the awareness among Indians and management of dyslipidemia as a major modifiable risk factors of SCID. What are the Indian CBD burden? If you see, the top two, three causes is heart attack is number one. And the brain attack or stroke, cerebrovascular disease, they comprise around about the 25% of death of all Indians. If you see the CV mortality in millions, in 1990, it was just 2.2. In 2020, just 119% increase in mortality of hours and because of this epidemic of coronary artery disease. Unfortunately, we have got first heart attack. And if you see the percentage, young Indians below the age of 40 has heart attack 25%. Less than 45, 40%. Less than 50, 55% has got first heart attack. And less than 55, 67% has got heart attack. So that is truly uh, very, a serious phenomena. And why this occurs, there is changing epidemiology in India. We have got more urbanization, Bharat Mata, not Gram Vashni. We have become more urban. We have got more stress. We have got changing life dietary pattern. We have got reduced physical activity. We have got this improved life expectancy and that is causing increased number of CBD and increased number of early attacks of CAED. And see this, McDonald's is flooded in India now. We, we Indians are enjoying these pizza, burgers, and all these uh, uh, foods that is junk foods. So however sternized we get, Indians are Indians. That is our prime minister says. And if you compare the MI at younger age in Indians, Chinese, and Japanese, we all are South Asians, but high smoking, high BP, but heart attack among Chinese, very low. Japanese, the lowest. And you just see the comparison between India and this China and other countries. And we, we, why we are having more coronary artery disease even in the young age. Friends, we have got traditional risk factors in India. Numerous case control studies documented premature CAD, CAD in South Asian similar or lower prevalence of traditional risk factors than the other population. However, unlike other traditional risk factors, prevalence of diabetes is unfortunately higher in South Asia. And compared with Europeans, South Asians have got increased abdominal visceral fat. That may be the cause of increased insulin resistance and diabetes. 
what is the extent of diabetic dyslipidemia in India? India being the capital of diabetes, an ICMR India study showed that 64%, more than that, with diabetes and 77% million pre-diabetic, estimate is that 86% of male and 98% of women who have diabetic in India have got concomitant dyslipidemia, be it Tamil Nadu, be it Maharashtra, be it Jharkhand, or be it Tamil, this Chandigarh. And why it is so? Is the region in the diet? Is the uh, whether region in the physical activity? Yes. Is there any genetic factors? Abnormal variants of ApoC3 and ApoE genes common in India. And Neil in 1962 said about the starvation gene therapy, gene theory. Body composition, again, excess of body fat in relation to body mass is more in Indians. And the famous inter-heart study that shows that most common dominant risk factors out of nine uh, that was taken in the inter study, lipids uh, stops the list in that. These 15,000 50, 15, patients, 14,000 control in 15, 52 countries. And what you see, the lipids, PAR, the population attributable risk, 50% of population had shows dyslipidemia. 36% shows smoking, and only 33% shows psychosocial and others are less. So this is the most dominant risk factors in India. What is the prevalence of dyslipidemia, especially the hypercholesteremia in multi-site Indian study? Both male and females are having the high level of cholesterol, but female have got comparatively higher level of cholesterol. And what is the, about the atherogenic dyslipidemia? All studies, South Asian, European, Chinese, and Latin American all show as if you compare the South Asian, we Indians have got low HDL, most common, high TG, and high lipoprotein, small a, but HDL level is very, very, very uncommon in this. So APOB has been shown in this inter study to be a good marker, good predictor of dyslipidemia. Prevalence of pattern of dyslipidemia in adolescent patients. If you see this study in uh, around 2,500 children aged 15 to 18 years of age, what do you see? They have got obesity and the HDL level was less than 55 in almost 50% of the children. And less than 40, this 20% uh, has got less than 40% of HDL. So what HDL showing less even in the children. So what, what is the remedy? We should screen these uh, children at the age of 20, only then we can pick up the limit of magnitude of dyslipidemia in young adults. And these are the beautiful HDL, LDL, and depending upon the cholesterol, chylomicrons and VLDL. But we have to focus upon the atherogenic particles. We have got apolipoprotein B containing LDL as well as small dense lipoprotein. And the smaller they are, dangerous they are, that is cholesterol rich. They, they, we have to focus upon the, this apolipoprotein B containing cholesterol rich molecules. There's none HDL has been shown to be the greater marker, greater indicator of lipid profiles. And these are the atherogenic classes of lipoprotein classes. Apart from the HDL, rest lipoprotein, small a, LDL, IDL, and others, they are in the non-HDL group. What is the relationship between TG and CAD? In general population, TG have proved to be an independent risk factor of CAD, but not all patients with high TG are at increased risk. Till now, nobody can separate the two groups, atherogenic TG from non-atherogenic TG. The concept is these patients with high TG with prevailing small, again, small particle size are at risk. In diabetes, TG and low HDL have more strong and consistent relationship with the, uh, the CAD. We Indians have got low prevalence of traditional risk factors, but why we have got high disease burden? Why we get the disease at the early stage? Why we have got the more severe form of the disease and poor outcome? We Asian have got the paradox. Let us try to find what are the non-traditional risk factors, whether they are more common in Indians. We have got the non-traditional risk factors like high coronary calcium scoring. 
increase carotid in media intima thickness, we should measure it. Lipoprotein small is very important non-traditional respecters. Metabolic syndrome, we are very common. Homocysteine and CRP should also be measured in Indians. And this is the CAC scoring. If it is more than 400, it says that 100% specificity. So that should also be included in that. This lipoprotein is small. They are more common among the Indian patients existing with the family history of CAD. Lipoprotein is small a level in the Asian newborns they are significantly higher than in the Chinese in Singapore. So level of this, if it is more than 20 milligram, that in, uh, shows the relationship with the increased this SACVD. Presence of this metabolic syndrome, again, very common in Indians, and this obesity and metabolic syndrome in an individual who is otherwise at low 10 year risk of ACVD indicates high time, high lifetime, SACBD, and we have to see that whether we have got this metabolic syndrome or not. Then the homocysteine, again, this should be also major, and this has been also shown to have the uh, uh, relationship with the increased SACBD risk. CRP, again, especially the highly sensitive CRP, that should be also measured. A value of more than two indicates increased risk of ASCVD. So how to measure it? how to calculate it, whether it is the Framingham study score or whether SEC scoring. We have seen the joint British society JVS3 uh, calculator that seems to be more in or more near to our, our values because it has been, it estimates the lifetime risk. It has been validated in Indians and it also includes the non-conventional risk factors. Although we should have our truly Indian lifetime ASCVD risk calculator. And it shows that your life of your heart. But if suppose this calculator says your life of the heart is just 43, you shall be very much surprised and afraid and you shall try to improve the heart years. So this is a very good calculator and one should know about this. And the paradox is that we Indians the Indian doctors are better in auscultation, but they do not want to keep the laptop. They don't, don't want to calculate the risk of the patients, risk of themselves, so that we can give true advice how to improve the, this risk of the, this uh, dyslipidemia or lifetime risk. Our approach, friends, should identify the high risk patient, assess the risk of the factors, estimate the lifetime risk, and patients should be advised that how to improve this risk and how to uh, have the, what should be the target of the, this uh, you know, dyslipidemia. And uh, there should be also, we should take in the history, whether the patient has got MI uh, or CAD, history of ischemic strokes, whether there is carotid plant, whether there is uh, atherosclerotic peripheral artery disease or aortic endodermal atherosclerosis or renal artery stenosis. This, these are the five pre-existing AS5 or 6 ASCVD evidence, and that should be also noted. And with that, we can calculate that whether the patient has got very high risk or high risk or moderate risk, depending upon whether the pre-existing ASCVD or diabetes with the two or more major ASCVD or familial homogeneous hypercholesterolemia. There is a very important factor to classify it in the very high risk group. And three or, may, or more ASCVD risk factors, uh, that, that is the high risk. Two major risk factors is uh, the moderate risk and zero to one seems to be the lower risk. And by that, we estimate the lifetime ASCVD risk. And if it is more than 45, that carries high risk. That carries more chances of atherosclerosis and the more chances of ASCVD. So what should be the Indian target? Whether the, that is the target which is fixed by the European, that is the target fixed by the Americans, we should have the Indian target. Friends, lower the better. The LDL level or other levels should be lower the better, whether it is the primary prevention, all studies show that lower the better. And what is the ESC, ESC guideline says? If you low this, uh, lower this target of ALDLC, and that is better, moderate, we have got 100, high patient has got 70, 
milligram or less. And in the very high risk group, we have to lower the LDLC level less than 50. And so this proposed LDLC lipoprotein cholesterol goal for secondary prevention and familiar hypercholesteremia in India with focus on PS, PCSK inhibitor monoclonal antibody, expert consensus statement from Lipid Association just published in 2020. And that what shows that there should be extreme high risk group and the category A and category B. And in category B, the LDLC levels should be less than 30. And category A should be less than 50. And what is this category A and B? If you see this, any patient having CAD with one or more of the following, if the patient has got diabetic, patient has got the polyvascular disease, or patient has got the three or major ASCVD risk and target organ damage, or the patient has got a recurrent ACS within 12 months, despite on the LDLC therapy. And then, then there are the A groups and uh, other groups are also there. So in the extreme risk group, that in the category B, we have to lower the uh, LDLC goal less than 30 and category A more than uh, this uh, less than 50. And how to do it, we know that we shall see in the treatment or therapy group. What is the target beyond LDL? There are several atherogenic lipoproteins and LDL accounts only for 75% of them. There are residual risk of ASCVD in statin treated patients remaining as high as 50% to 70%. It is thus evident that in order to reduce the ASCVD effectively, we need to concentrate on all atherogenic lipoproteins, not just the LDL alone. We have to think about the non-HDL cholesterol. We have to think about the TG, and we have to think about the small dense lipoproteins. This non-HDLC has been shown to correlate well with the subclinical atherosclerosis. And what should be the level in the very high risk group? This level should be less than 80 milligram. And you know that this correlates well with the ASCVD than the LDL that includes the TGN lipoprotein is small A, does not need to be fasting, can be easily calculated by total cholesterol and HDL, and it is a surrogate for very dangerous small dense lipoprotein. A triglyceride level, don't underestimate this high TG because it has got the linear correlation between TG level and CHD risk. If your triglyceride level is more than 200, 250, it, you are of phenotype B. What is this? If your triglyceride level is high, liver will produce more of the VLDL. And in this case, there will be more formation of dangerous, small, this sticky, dense lipoprotein, which will skin, they stick to your endothelium and cause atherosclerotic process. But if your, if your TG is low, the liver will produce less of VLDL, large LDL will be produced, and that will be taken care of by our body scavengers, and so you are in the safer side. So my dear friends, if our non-fasting TG is high, more than 249, we have to take care of that. If it is very high, it is also the, uh, then we shall have the different class of that. There is a huge relationship of HDL and CV risk. We know that the HDL level, when it is high, it protects us. But you see that if it is very high, it may, may be contradictory, counterproductive. This is, the, this is the individual, six lakhs individuals, no prior cardiac condition with a mean follow-up of five years, very high level of HDLC were associated with increased risk of death from CV and non-CV causes. So this inter-heart study showed the HDL in Indians prevalence of low HDL levels was much higher in South Asians than in the other population. Increasing HDLC was associated with more, more than 13% reduction in MI risk in South Asians. So we have to take care to increase the HDLC goal. What should be therapy for the Indian dyslipidemia? What should be our approach? We should approach by A, B, C, D, E. What is the A? A means that these patients needs aspirin, antiplatelets. This patient needs the close monitoring of blood pressure. And the C is cholesterol and dyslipidemia management apart from the diet and exercise. So appropriate, appropriate 
approach to the management of dyslipidemia, friends. We have to identify the subjects with dyslipidemia and increasing the usage and adherence of statin in suitable patient, focusing on the HD, this LDLC goal. But identification and application of other lipid markers like lipoprotein small a and apolipoprotein B for the risk stratification and control of vascular inflammation. Since significant residual risk persists even after the high intensity statin therapy, further lowering of LDLC beyond that achieved by statin have been shown to reduce further CB risk by addition of non-statin lipid lowering drugs like azetamide or PCSK inhibitors. So what are the these uh, drugs? High intensity atorvastatin, 80 milligram or 40 milligram are the drugs and dosage for choice for initial management of dyslipidemia in patients with established ASCVD to achieve the proposed goal. But physicians have got inertia in not using the high intensity statin. That was felt to be important factors for patients in India not achieving the LDLC goal. So our advice will be, we have to use the high intensity statin therapy to reach the goal of LDLC. It is noted that, that this statin doses are reduced in ACS patient after just few months. In patients who are unable to tolerate this drug, that is another matter, higher dose may be reduced, lower dose should be used. Azetamide 10 milligram is the drug of first choice for adjunctive therapy for patients with statin for patients who are unable to achieve the LDLC goal after six to eight weeks of therapy with the high statin intensity statin. If LDLC goal are not achieved after treatment with this combination of azetamide, PCSK inhibitors may be considered for addition as a third choice in, in addition to high intensity Egitamide and this uh, statin in egitamide. In clinical practice, providers may need to adjust the intensity of statin therapy, sometimes because of side effects or tolerability, but in that case, moderate intensity, uh, this statin therapy and egitamide, that will give the very good benefit. So this is the ESC lipidemia guideline that shows that for the moderate intensity statin, that will reduce the 30% high intensity statin, it will reduce the 50% of LDLC. High intensity statin plus azetamide will reduce the 65%. But if you want to achieve the 85% reduction, we have to add again PCSK inhibitors. So how low is too low? Zero LDL hypothesis. Many patients on PCSK inhibitors achieve extremely low level of LDLC level. Extremely low LDLC level are associated with even less cardiovascular risk and has got very minimal side effects or few side effects can be had. So this is the algorithm for the extremely high risk group. And this in that we can say that the optimal control of diabetes and hypertension is matched with high intensity statin plus the reinforcement of lifestyle measures like heart healthy diet regular exercise, weight reduction, quit smoking, alcohol restriction, even if, if you cannot reduce the LDLC goal less than 50 in the extreme risk group, add azetamide. If it's still, it's still not there and patient is in the category B, add this PCSK inhibitor to reduce it 30. Statin sometimes has got the risk of DM, but this Modest risk should not change the statin prescribing for diabetes patients. And then there are, you know, there are Fourier trials and ODC trials that also show the effect of PCSK inhibitors in the row, this uh, reducing the LDLC goal. What about the PCSK in the, like, the lipoprotein is small a? This uh, uh, monoclonal antibody has been shown to lower approximately 30% of lipoprotein small a um, in, in the patient who have got high level of this, this, this advantage of PCSK should also be utilized. So LDA recommendation from the high TG level, if the patient has got TG level more than 200 and less than 500, treat with statin. So again, the drug of choice is statin, but if TG level is more than 100, treat it with fibrate and prevent the acute pancreatitis. 
So friends, sometimes we combine the statin and fibrin, but that does not improve the ASCD outcome, generally not recommended. Also, there are some hazards. Consider therapy with statin and phenofibrate for men, both with triglyceride level more than 204, but HDL level also low. But this, you have to watch for the kidney and other things, and you have to space the two the drugs five hours or more. Combination therapy with the statin and niacin has not been demonstrated any additional CV benefits over statin alone, but may raise risk of stroke and is not generally recommended. This LA recommendation on high TG level, we have already told about this, uh, this role of statin and yes. So coming to the lifestyle modification, inter-heart study showed that smoking, it is never too late to quit uh, after quitting smoking, risk reduces by 50% within two years. Alcohol consumption was not found to be protective among South Asians. And Vegetarians, we all we think always that vegetarians, so we are protected from CAD. No, vegetarians and non-vegetarians, if you compare, compare, this is not much of difference. So vegetarians, if you take the high level of saturated fats, you are not very much protected from the CAD. Eat the baked and boiled fish at, at least twice a week. And this is the our Indians. Uh, which represents one third of our population remain inactive, uh, lying and listening to the TV and other things. And Mr. Modi, is it true that there are 4 billion lazy people in India? Yes, that is why I invented World Yoga, Yoga Day. That is the answer of that. But we have to think about the Indian lipid policy. We have to think about the individual approach. We have to think about the community for primordial prevention. We have to think about the policy which can enforce that all adults at the level of age of 20 years should be screened for this uh, lipid profiles. And we remember the magnificent seven, quit smoking, avoid sedentary habits, avoid, avoid the saturated diets, and always remember that statin is the drug that can prevent this ASCVD. And remember the systemic hypertension. Remember the sugar that is a very much terrorist of our body. Remember the sleep hours. Remember the stress and so on and so forth. So what is the answer of the Indian story? In that young man, 32, he was a smoker, was a major risk factor. He was obese, was a moderate risk factor. He had got LDL level low, although, but LPA, a small A was moderate risk factor. HDL was very low, that was a major risk factor. Even in these patients, you have to lower the LDL level, depending upon the risk factor, to below 50 or below 30. Statin should be used in these patients. So, take home message from us is atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease events are skyrocketing in India and occur with only modest hypercholesteremia. More aggressive LDLC and non HDLC goals should be achieved, especially in the secondary prevention. Statin and HTMI use needs to increase by our doctor's friends. PCSK inhibitors can facilitate LDLC goal achievement, but the cost is variable. Multifaceted approach are required to induce lifestyle changes, control ASCVD risk factors, and optimal lipid lowering. A screening of all adults at the age of 20 should be made mandatory during the college entry. And this is our India, true India, mother India, in which the famous song is, Agar dunia mein aay ho to jina hi padega. If you want to live, you have to live longer. And just please heed my simple advice, Keep your healthy heart, watch your cholesterol chart, and live a long and happy life. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Dr. D.P. Singh, for your excellent presentation. I think since this is a presidential oration, no more questions. Yes. So uh, just, to, uh, just to summarize or take home, you have yes. given detail about the insight of the Indian diabetes lipidemia and the triad of features you, you have explained, which is very much relevant. Hypertrichidemia, this is a very important thing, low SGL and small dense, L, low SGL and small dense LDL. And this small dense LDL is related to triglyceride. So you have to treat this. And if the patient has a very high risk, 
use high intensity risk, high or very high risk, high intensity, otherwise moderate intensity is the team. Triglycerides should be only treated when the label is first, when the label is more than 500. Uh, I, now I request uh, Dr. Kamlesh Tiwari to see if it works. Kamlesh Tiwari. Dr. DBG, not to my Kamali Kardiyad. Very beautiful. And thrives. Very beautiful. We have not told you, but we have not told you. 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 So, we have not told you. Sir, Kamlesh Tiwari, sir. If you want to speak, otherwise we will close the program. Dr. D.P. Singh, you have not come here. Can you come here? Yes, sir. I want to be standing here, sir. Sir, sir, 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 sir. Sir, sir. Good, good, good. So nice, Dr. Dipi Singh. Samar sir. Great sir. Samar sir. Samar sir. So, after the oration, we are on to the very important session of this conference that is the inaugural program. And it's my customary duty first to announce about the program, I'll call the dignitaries on the desk and then go ahead. Uh, there are slight changes that I don't say I would like to announce. Uh, our chief guest, Dr. P.K. Dev, because of some personal engagements, could not make it, but we will miss him, but he still is our chief guest for this uh, session. And um, our reception committee chairman, Dr. R.K. Agrawal, Due to some reasons, he was unavailable. So, Dr. Arvind Kumar will be speaking on it here. So, I will start uh, by welcoming, by calling uh, the dignitaries on the desk. First, Dr. Uh, B.P. Singh, sir, uh, our national vice president, national CSI. Mm -hmm. Dr. B.P. Singh, sir, president, CSI Bihar chapter. Dr. V.P. Sina, sir, president elect, CSI Bihar chapter. Dr. S.S. Chatterjee, sir, who is joining virtually. Our scientific committee chairman, Dr. Arvind Kumar, reception committee chairman, Dr. Bibi Bharti, organizing committee chairman, Dr. Kino, secretary, uh, CSI Bihar chapter, and Dr. Nirav is also here. And lastly, Dr. P. Uh, P. P. Mohanan, sir, the national CSI president, uh, has he joined? I am here. Yes. I am around. Don't worry. Please, please join us. We are proud to have you here. Dr. Devbrata Roy, Honorary Secretary, CSI. Sir, we are proud to have you here. So, without a delay, I will request Dr. Arvind Kumar, sir, our reception committee chairman, to welcome our dignity. Arvind, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Nishant. Uh, I am uh, privileged to give welcome address in place of Dr. R.K. Rivar. Uh, due to some reason, he could not come. So, on behalf of the uh, uh, or, uh, organizing committee, uh, I welcome uh, first our most dynamic president, National CSI, Dr. P.P. Mohanan, sir, then our chief guest, Dr. P.K. Dev, sir, our highly energetic, uh, already general secretary, CSI, National, Dr. Dev Arvatai, sir, vice president, CSI, Dr. P.P. Singh, sir, chairman, scientific committee, Dr. S.S. Chatterjee, sir, President CSI Bihar, Dr. D.P. Singh, sir, and uh, Chairman Organizing Committee, Dr. B.B. Bharti, sir, Honorary Secretary CSI Bihar, Avina Bhagat, and our, uh, our Dynamic Organizing Secretary, Cardicon 21, Nisan Tripathi, Dr. B.P. Sunha, sir, Dr. Nirav, sir. I welcome you all to this inaugural ceremony of uh, 27th Annual Conference Virtual of CSI Bihar Chapter and uh, virtually. And I also welcome uh, all the speakers, faculties, 
our moderators, our chairpersons, and all the delegates who has participated and um, making this conference a great success. From the core of my heart, I welcome you all, sir. And I also congratulate the uh, organizing team, Bibi Bharti and Nisan Tripathi, for organizing such a wonderful conference in COVID era. And especially the chairman, scientific committee, SS Chatterjee, and our entire team for beautifully uh, making a program which has benefited all of us, particularly uh, the doctors from our periphery attending this conference. And this is a great success. Thank you very much. Over to Nishant Tripathi. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. And now I'll request Dr. B.B. Bharti, sir, our Chairman of Managing Committee, to say a few words. Respected my seniors and this and a special dignitary sitting on the this desk and the, on virtual meeting. Respect all the seniors, all the juniors, and the 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 other delegates and speaker who actually performed very well in this uh, virtual conference. They did a wonder job. They, they spoke in many of the common clinical problems and the important uh, aspect of cardiology, which is mandatory for the improving the knowledge of the cardiologist and the different doctors <coughs> practicing cardiology. It is a, one of the important aspects of a doctor's life because, because the knowledge you can you can't give a proper treatment or or proper output of patient. It is a very mandatory and essential part of the doctor's life. This type of the academic program it required day by day improvement and the, also as a training program which can offer the output of the patient in our Bihar state. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, Bhati, sir, for your wonderful words. Uh, it's customary to, in our culture, to for any academic program, we pray to the master Swati and light the lamp for any occasion. I request the event organizers to do a virtual lighting of lamp and play a Swati. <laughs> Chatterjee, sir, under whose guidance we were able to do this program to say a few words to us. Chatterjee, sir. Good evening, everybody. I, I take this occasion to welcome Dr. Mohanan, the president of CSI, Dr. B.P. Singh, the vice president of CSI, Dr. D.P. Singh, president of CSI Bihar chapter, and Dr. Bharati, uh, president-elect. Besides, Dr. Nishant Tripathi, Dr. Avinab, Dr. Arvind, Professor B.P. Sina, Dr. Neerav, and Professor Samal, and Dr. P. K. So I, as we are coming to the end of this uh, session, I mean, there's only a few topics left. I want to give all credit of the scientific content of this conference to Dr. Nishant Tripathi and Dr. Avinab Bhagat and to Dr. B.B. Bharti who has done all the homework, I try to keep, keep myself as only the figurehead. And as I strongly feel that this is how it should be, the baton must be passed on to the younger generation. Having said so, 
I want to share some thoughts. I was really, I was really very uh, unhappy to see the number of attendees in the conference. And this is very important. In fact, we had only 25 to 50 attendees in, 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 in both the halls, and there were about 70 speakers. So this should be taken care of. And I very strongly feel that we should have a shorter program, shorter and regular program of few hours on particular topics to have a wider audience participation. And this will be probably more helpful and more participated by the audience. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Chatterjee, sir. Uh, now I request Dr. Abhinav Bhagat, our dynamic secretary, CSIBR chapter, to present his secretary report. A very good evening to all the speakers, delegates, chairpersons, and faculty members. I welcome you all to the opening ceremony the inauguration ceremony of the 27th annual conference of the Bihar Cardiological Society of India, Bihar chapter. Uh, it has been a great learning experience for the organizing team over the last one year, arranging the, uh, over the last one month, arranging the scientific program. Dr. Chatterjee, sir, has been a great guiding force in this. I'd like to thank him for, from the core of our hearts for guiding us. Uh, the last one year has been very tough for all of us amidst the ongoing pandemic and uh, we have tried to keep up the academic momentum over the last one year by organizing various virtual conferences and public awareness campaigns. We have decided to also start a research registry in Bihar and involve ourselves more in the uh, research and studies in the near future. And last but not least, I would like to thank all of you and uh, I'm a special mention, I would like to pay tributes to all those who lost their life in this pandemic and their loved one. A special mention to Dr. Late Dr. Prabhat Kumar, who was supposed to organize this conference, but unfortunately he couldn't. I pay my tributes to him and I thank you all from the core of my heart for, for this conference. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Abhinav. Thank you very much. And now I request uh, our president, CSI Bihar chapter, Professor Dr. D.P. Singh, sir, to say a few words and bless us with his words. D.P. Singh, sir. Uh, thank you, Dr. Nishan Tripathi, our master of ceremony and organizing secretary of this uh, great 27th Cardicon annual chapter, annual conference of Bihar, chapter of cardiology, CSI Bihar. And uh, this is a great occasion, great day. And uh, this is the World Friendship Day. And this is the 1st of August in which the inauguration of this great Cardicon 2020-21 is being done. And we have uh, amongst us, our the towering cardiologist, very dynamic person in Dr. P.P. P. Mohanan, who has, who is gracing the occasion and he will be inaugurating this great conference. Sir, we, we have also our dynamic secretary general of CSI National, Dr. Debrat Rai, sir. We have also among our guardian, father figure of cardiology, Dr. UC Shamal, sir. We, we welcome you all with the open hearts and we have amongst us the national president of CSI, the great dynamic Dr. V.P. Singh. Our elder brother, Dr. S.S. Chatterjee, who has been here in the organizing this scientific feast, academic feast of two days conference, is a great one. And ably supported by this organizing chairman, our immediate past president, humble cardiologist, Dr. D.V. Bharti, and our on dynamic secretary, Dr. Abhinav Bhagat. The reception committee chairman, Dr. R.K. Agrawal, uh, salute him as truly first cardiologist of Bihar because I have seen him growing from zero to hero. But he was, he's not here. In place, our dynamic 
cardiologist Dr. Arvind Kumar, uh, we welcome you, sir. In this, we, we are going to Dr. Neera is also here, but our next incumbent, Dr. V.P. Shina, is here, who is going to take the mental from us from this 2nd of August or today's itself as a president of CSI and president-elect Dr. V.P. Shina. And all our senior teachers, senior doctors, senior cardiologists, all I salute you, welcome you as a president of CSI Bihar in this August gathering. All the delegates who are participating, who have participated, and all the chairpersons, all the colleagues, I uh, welcome you in this conference. And for last one month, our uh, this organizing team is leaving no stone unturned to make this event a great success. And this 80, more than 80 speakers, and this 80 speakers, seven international, 40, 35 national across the country, and the 40 state uh, speakers are here. And these, these are a great occasion where we are assembling here. The quality is very good. Content is very good. Information is very good. And with the, this great wishes that this conference is the big, big success. Thank you very much. Over to Dr. Nishant Tripathi. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your encouraging words. Uh, now I will request uh, Dr. Brother Roy, Honorary Secretary, Cardiological Society of India, National uh, Honorary Secretary, to bless us with his few words. Dr. Debrother Roy, sir, please. Uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Tripathi. Uh, and uh, I must thank all the luminaries of the Bihar chapter, the President, Dr. D.P. Singh, the Secretary, the Scientific Chair, uh, Dr. S.S. Chatterjee, the organizing secretary, Dr. Tripathi, our national vice president, Dr. B.P. Singh, member of the executive committee, Dr. Arvind Kumar, and above all, our respected president, national president, Dr. P.P. Mohanan. A very good evening to you all. It has been uh, my pleasure to take part in this conference and uh, actually, I have been attending it for many years, and it is a nice experience to be among you physically. So this time, because of the COVID situation, I know this is not possible, but you have reached us virtually with your warmth and congeniality. So thank you very much for that. Bihar always uh, has a special pay place uh, in the CSI headquarter. And this union between the headquarter and Bihar will be carried forward. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me. And uh, you had a great conference. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your nice words. Uh, moving ahead, I'll request our uh, the National Vice President, Cardiological Society of India, our own Professor Dr. B.P. Singh, sir, to bless us with his few words. Thank you, Dr. Nishan. Dr. P. P. Mohanan, President, Cardiological Society of India. Our Secretary, Honorary Secretary, Cardiological Society of India, Dr. Devrat Rai. Dr. U. C. Samal, I am seeing him on the screen, the senior most person amongst us. I welcome you, sir. On behalf of the whole organizing committee, I am seeing you, Professor U. C. Samal. <laughs> and President Bihar, Chapter of Cardiac Society of India, Dr. D.P. Singh, President Rubin Kumar, who will take charge from tomorrow, Dr. D.P. Sina, who is sitting beside me, President uh, Organizing Committee, Chairman Organizing Committee, Dr. B.P. Bharati, Chairman Scientific Committee, Dr. Rishi Strategy, Secretary Bihar CSI, Dr. Rajna Ghadas, and Equity huh? Committee member, Dr. Arvind Kumar. There is some confusion. Dr. Vipin should have been speaking from the beginning on behalf of the Bihar CSI. Now I am speaking as a National Vice President CSI 
ये थोड़ा अजूबा लगता है हमको अरविंद कुमार मेंबर एग्जीक्यूटिव कमेटी एंड नीरव कुमार अनदर कलीग फ्रेंड्स फ्रॉम मीडिया प्रिंट एंड इलेक्ट्रॉनिक फार्मा पीपल एंड अदर गेस्ट टू मॉर टुडे आई एम रियली प्लीज्ड टू सी दैट दिस वंडरफुल सक्सेस ऑफ द कॉन्फ्रेंस I would like to direct the data, which was wrongly placed. More than 250 people joined this conference yesterday and today also. The data, 35 to 40 or 50 faculty, always remain one session. One session. Not coming. Not coming. Not coming. Not coming. Not coming. Not coming. You are not visible, Doctor B P Singh. You are not visible. करो भाई क्या कर रहे हो? हाँ, visible करो तुम. हाँ. Anyway, so it, that way this conference was very successful. Scientific program was well crafted. Doctor Chaturdi had put in uh, good efforts, and all the organizing team, Biri Bharti, Nishan, Abhinav, everybody, Nirav, B P Singh, also everybody, particularly these three or four people. Uh, we had. Interested oh, and the very such good science program and I think that whatever program we are organize in a physical way, I was I always used to say success program and hundred people we went project in the hall. That was the most successful the conference we could organize. Doctor Chatterjee said more than two hundred fifty people. Yes, I am very happy. I am very happy. I have been corrected. I am very happy. Yes, yes, sir. You don't think so? Oh, that was the faculty at a time, at at a time attending, and the scientific which was so great, I cannot imagine wonderful program yeah, by the faculty and our colleagues, younger colleagues. My DM has then presented the PG session was so nice presented. Left brain angioplasty Bihar is presenting that we are doing all type of things which we are seeing in the national and international conference. That I want to give a message from this podium, Mr. President. You gave a, such a inspiring talk that we also think that we need your help from you organizing our research and improving our SES care. We are trying our best locally to organize. We have a Ajay Sinha, probably as a convener of our research activity, Dr. Sinha. Another doctor, Varthi Misha, they will organize and now start our own ACS registry on pattern of Kerala ACS registry, Bihar ACS registry. We think so. In the coming year or future, with the blessing of the other people, we will be able to start this research activity also. The conference was really a grand. I want to congratulate the whole organizing team and the delegates who attended, the faculty who attended. Uh, Dr. P. K. Dev, our chief guest, couldn't attend this function on the urgency of some family problem. Uh, I want to pay my respect to him. He is really a person behind this Cardiological Society of India. He is the soul and spirit behind this Cardiological Society of India. I think everybody will agree with my this statement. So, ladies and gentlemen, my dear friends, I really again want to congratulate to you. The Dissanthri Party organizing team, B. B. Bharti, Abhinav Bhagat, and everybody, and other people from Pharma. Doctor, Mr. Gravesha, he associated with us like anything. So I want to congratulate everybody and hope next conference we will do in a physical way and we'll try to improve the situation of cardiology. Uh, anyway, improve. Better with the help of the, our Kerala colleagues, our president, our secretary, Dr. Devrath Rai. Thank you. Anything I, I have covered all the things I think. Anybody thing left, the president will let this after me. Thank you. Thank you, sir. As usual, your words encourage us like anything, and pos your positivity is uh, always there. So thank you very much. Uh, because Dr. P. K. Dev. Our uh, chief guest could not make it, but we still miss him. He was supposed to bless us, but unfortunately, is not here. So I will move ahead and request Dr. P. P. Mohanan sir 
National President Kaliyoskar Society of India to bless us with his few words. Pp Mohan sir. Thank you, Mr. President, uh, Secretary, the incoming President, all my friends in the Executive Committee National <laughs> and my senior colleagues there. Forgive me for not naming you individually, but then uh, it gives me immense pleasure to be part of your uh, scientific program. And also it gives me added inventors to inaugurate these two-day conferences that you have been conducting. Now it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an honor basically because Bihar chapter has been doing surprisingly excellent activities during all these years. I've been part of the central uh, CSI for uh, more than about 15, 20 years. And uh, I've been always impressed with the, uh, the, the camaraderie the congeniality of the Bihar crowd. You have people like Samal, Dr. Chatterjee, Dr. B.P. Singh, and uh, the whole lot of younger brigade like Aravind and others, so that you gel always. And that is the way that uh, now many of the remembering your Bihar chapter formation of uh, in 1994 with uh, the luminaries like Dr. Ashok Kumar Thakur, C.P. Thakur, Dr. Arya, Sinha, I mean, quite a lot of people. And uh, you've been doing right from the inception. Uh, your branch has been doing wonderfully well, and that is the way it should be doing. Bikar, again, has the privilege of training um, the, the uh, postgraduates in cardiology from 2008, and uh, you have in another few, I'm sure, right now, 250 statement chapter members, more than 100 central uh, CSI members. You're doing excellently well. And I'm sure in the coming years, Bihar will be a, one of the strongest forte of Cardiological Society of India. And uh, uh, with all your permission, with all your blessing, I have greatest pleasure in inaugurating this two-day conference, the 27th conference of Bihar chapter. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Your words really encourage us like anything. You have, uh, we are really very grateful to have you uh, here today. Uh, like all uh, good things, it's customary for the organizing secretary to put a vote of thanks. Uh, well, when I hear vote of thanks given in award ceremonies, I always used to think, but when you arrange something, you organize something and when it comes to an end successfully, you are overwhelmed. So I thought ki I will just uh, put this vote of thanks very lightly, but I'm really overwhelmed that so many people are associated, then only uh, or, uh, an event becomes successful. So I'll uh, start uh, with thanking Dr. P.P. Mohanan, sir, National President CSI. Sir, I'm very grateful to you. You can, uh, your words, your energy has rubbed up on us and we think we can do something to make you proud. Thank you, sir. I, I missed my, my I missed mention my secretary. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sir. Okay. So I would uh, like to thank Dr. P.K. Dev, sir, who unfortunately was not here, but I know him personally. He is always there for us and he has great affection for uh, our state. P.K. Dev, sir, thank you very much. I would like to thank the Honorary Secretary, CSI, Dr. Devrata Rai, sir, who took time from his schedule to come over here and do virtually. So thank you, sir. I'd like to thank our National Vice President, our own Dr. B.P. Singh, sir. I, I mean, it's very, I cannot thank him more. It's uh, publicly I'm doing my gratitude to him because he has been a solid pillar of, uh, you know, strength. For me, particularly, as in individually for me in Patna, he has stood rock solid behind me. Whenever I need help, I can go to him anytime. Whether, whether I speak or not, I know from my heart that he's always there for me. Thank you very much, sir. I'd like to thank Dr. Uh, Arvind, sir, our reception committee chairman. His elder brother to me and his skills in organizing things is phenomenal. I mean, those who are outside, they will not understand how meticulously he does the things. Without him, any event, I can assure everyone that without Arvind, sir, any event of CSI BR chapter is not possible. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank 
Dr. S. S. Chatterjee, sir, our respected S. S. Chatterjee, sir, whose academic acumen, whose just uh, dedication to the academics is phenomenal. We learned so much from him just by talking to him. And he's always dedicated to the academics, always uh, uh, talking about the researches, various topics, and his, his energy in uh, exploring new things is, is uh, really uh, worthy to learn. And we are learning from you, sir. Every time I interact with you, I learn something. Thank you, Chatterjee, sir. I'd like to thank our president, CSI Bihar chapter, Dr. B.P. Singh, sir, who is always pushing me to do something good, something new. His energy is infectious. He likes to put things uh, in a very organized way. Sometimes I uh, do it successfully, sometimes I fail. Sir, please accept my gratitude for core of my heart, Dr. D.P. Singh, sir. Then I'd like to thank our chairman organizing committee, Dr. Bharti, sir. Again, he's an elder brother. He has, I'm following his footsteps right from my MD days. So wherever he goes, I follow him back. So, <laughs> so, so Bharti, sir, from, uh, because uh, well, hopefully I'll follow his steps in being a good cardiologist also. So thank you, Bharti, sir, for always there with me. Oh, yeah. Sir, uh, there can know, uh, he's wonderful, Matab, those who know Bharti sir will, ex uh, will accept, will agree that he's a wonderful human being and i like to be like him. Thank you, sir. Then I'd like to thank my younger brother, Abhinav. Well, uh, I'm in Patna because of Abhinav, because he like pulled me into Patna. I was not supposed to come here, but... Because of him, I had to come here and now uh, we are part of the family. Uh, I don't think I'll have to put words to him uh, to say thank you. Abhino, thank you very much for always there, for always being there. And I'd also like to thank our incoming president, Dr. V.P. Sinha, sir. Though this conference was virtual and he, was, he had no business to be here, but just one phone call and he has been here for the uh, two days in the control room just to guide us, just to be a support behind me. Thank you, sir. I cannot thank you much. Then I'd like to thank all the speakers, faculty, both national and international. We had really a galaxy of stars from both uh, uh, national and international levels, and some are still to speak. I'm sorry I'm taking some time, but I, uh, I'm with the core of my heart, I want to thank each one of them. They were phenomenal. Despite being a virtual platform, they have been on time, they have completed most of the things on time, they have, uh, and they were really wonderful. We have learned a lot from them. Thank you, each one of them. No conference is successful without the delegates. And I'm happy to announce that almost 300 people at a peak today, there were 300 uh, hits on virtual platform. And I don't think there are enough words to express my gratitude to all the delegates from Bihar, from outside, all the physicians who attended. And thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone, each one of them who attended this uh, program. Then I'd like to thank our technical, sub technical and support staff, especially the Cubix team who have been behind this, uh, the whole show, and every credit goes to Sangmitra and his and her team for putting, for organizing such things in a very short notice, because you know, it, she was given this assignment just seven days back, so you can understand how beautifully she has uh, organized these things. Thank you, Sangmitra and your whole team. All the technical staff over here, Hari and his audiovisual team, all the, uh, people from media, print, electronic, all the industry people, because conferences need these people on, these, they are unsung heroes. And when I talk of unsung heroes, I wish, I like to take one name, that is Daveja, because with, without him, I don't think any of that, we can organize anything. For, for me, he's like, I don't even, he, he sometimes understand what I'm not saying. I'm scolding him for something which I've not told. And he's saying, ho jayega, sir, ho jayega, sir. Sab kuch ho jayega. He's, he's, ho jayega. Everything is ho jayega. So thank you, Dharmesh. And uh, the stalwarts from uh, Bihar, API and Bihar, those who have, have grown up watching them, Doc, Dr. Professor A.N. Rai, sir, Dr. P.B. Thakur, sir, Dr. Kamlesh Tiwari, sir, I can see some faces here, Dr. A.K. Jha, sir. So I really thank all of you for blessing us from uh, uh, on a virtual form. 
and last but not the least, Professor U.C. Samal sir. What words failed to describe him? I mean, at such an age, his, uh, he was talking to us, he was telling me his health is not good. But sir, you are phenomenal, we learned so much from you. Your whole uh, approach to the academics, uh, your dedication to the academics is really something that we should, everyone should learn from him. Basant Singh sir is also here. He has in a pillar of uh, cardiology in uh, our state. Thank you, sir. Thank you for being here. Okay. So uh, with these words, I think uh, we had a wonderful session. We And some uh, speakers are left. Radha sir, I can see. Radha sir, please welcome and thank you both to you. So without wasting any time, I, I think I can close. I can close this session. And thank you, everyone. Thank you very much.